Hello and welcome to Video DNA, where the English is bad and the tutorials are good. I'm Rata Bib and today I'm gonna show you how to make 3D reflections with no plugins at all. Check this out. Okay, this cool technique is gonna show you how to make almost real reflections with a solid or any image that you like. Uh, on a smartphone or any object that you want. It can even be a logo or a text logo and even on things that doesn't seem to reflect much as a potato. Okay, so we need to begin with a composition. So I'm gonna open a new composition. We're gonna call it reflection and we're gonna hit okay. And the first thing I want to do is I want to put the iPhone image right over here. It doesn't have to be a smartphone. It doesn't even have to be an iPhone. It can be uh, something else. Anyway, I'm going to scale it down so it's going to fit the comp. And now I want to create a new solid. And I'm going to make it white. And I'm going to call this reflection. And it can also be an image, but we're gonna take a solid. And the first thing I wanna do, I want to gradient ramp it. So I'm gonna put a ramp on it and I'm going to maybe rotate it and I'm gonna scale it down and that looks just fine. Maybe I'm gonna take this a bit over here and I want to put it on screen mode. So that's it. Looks fine, but I want to cut it on the phone. But first of all, I want to make them both a 3D layer. What do I need it to be a 3D layer for? Because if I'm gonna open a new camera and I'm gonna rotate it, I can see that it sticks right where the phone is. But if I'm gonna take it back on the Z axis, it's gonna move right as I wanted it, just a little bit too small, so I'm gonna scale it up a bit. And it moves just right, but it's behind it. So I need to do something for it to be above it, but still behind it. I know it sounds weird, but actually we can do it if we're gonna create a new adjustment layer and put it between them. What this does, it's not a bug, it's a feature, it actually breaks the 3D rendering order so the reflection will always render before the iPhone. So it's always going to be above it. I, th I hope I explained it right. If I didn't, don't hate me. Okay, so now I want to cut it exactly where the phone is. So I'm going to duplicate this one. Okay, I'm going to duplicate the phone layer and I'm going to put above the reflection layer. I'm going to go to the track map and I'm gonna tell the reflection to take the alpha mat of the layer above it. And now it moves and shows perfectly right. Amazing. Actually, this was the important stuff. This was the important thing, but I'm gonna take it even a little bit further. So it's gonna, it's gonna be seen exactly like this, minus the text. So we're gonna come back to the reflection Okay, I'm gonna change it because it's not right. Composition setting, reflection. Okay. Now I want to take care of the areas in the phone that are not supposed to be reflective, such as this part where you put your ear. So I'm gonna take this layer and I'm actually gonna pre-comp it. So I'm gonna go to layer, pre-compose, it's down there, and leave all attributes and press okay. And I'm gonna double click to get inside it. And now I want to take the rounded rectangle tool, the mask tool. And if I don't select the layer, I'm gonna get a shape layer. Let's go one step backwards. And I'm gonna select the iPhone layer and I'm gonna make this mask again. And I'm gonna reverse it by moving the mode to subtract. And now I can see that I have a little hole where the tiny earphone should be. Okay, so let's go 
outwards and we cannot actually see it because we have this layer duplicated as the alpha. So I'm going to call this I alpha because it's funny. And now I want to replace it with the comp we just created. So I'm going to select the layer and then I'm going to drag while pressing Alt so I can replace the layer. Nice. But I want to see the little something that you put the ear inside it. So I'm going to take another copy of the phone and I'm going to make it 3D and I'm going to parent it to the iPhone comp while pressing shift so it will jump to the same location. And now I can see that it's behind it. And if I want, I can take it a little bit backwards. So I'm going to get an illusion of volume, not really a volume because just another layer, just a little bit of, of volume, maybe a little bit more. Maybe I'm going to duplicate again and take it a little bit backwards. So now I have a little volume on the phone. So it's nice. Okay. This looks good, but I want it to be perfect. So I want to take us down to the ring. Actually, this ring is supposed to reflect a little bit different because it's supposed to rotate according to the angle of the camera that we have to this layer. So let's do it. First of all, I'm going to go inside the iPhone comp and I'm going to create a new solid and it's going to be this time black and I'm going to call this ring and now I want to take the ellipse tool the mask tool and I'm gonna shut down the layer temporarily and I'm gonna create a mask on the ring layer I'm gonna press shift so it's gonna be proportional and control so it's gonna be from the center perfect I'm gonna duplicate it and I'm going to double click it and scale it down a bit. Okay, I'm going to move it to subtract. And now I have a layer totally black that gives us the shape of the ring and it's obscuring it. So I'm going to take this layer, I'm going to copy it. Okay, control C, go back to the main comp, and I'm going to paste it again. And now I have this layer. Let's see it. I have this layer, which I cannot see because it's not 3D. So I'm going to make it 3D. And I'm going to make it a sun of uh, uh, the comp layer while pressing shift and it's going to jump to the same location. And what now? Now I need to put a gradient ramp. So it's over here. Now, let's take this bottom part to the bottom part of the ring. And let's take the upper part, this one to the top portion of the ring. And I want to change this gradient a bit, but I cannot change it too much. So I'm going to take the colorama effect. And I'm going to go to the output cycle and I'm going to select solarize gray. And it's going to give us approximately the, uh, the gradient that we need. We can edit the location of the gradient. So I'm going to be, it's going to look a little bit more Nice. Okay, I like it. And now, now I want this ring to rotate according to the camera angle. So first of all, I need to rotate it. And I'm going to take an effect, I'm going to call the transform effect. And this effect is gonna I'm gonna solo it so we can see it. This effect is going to act a little bit weird when we try to move its uh, position or anchor problem because it's, it's going to move the layer. So what I want to do, I want to take them both to be in the same location. So it will not move around so much. So to make it easier, I'm going to press all click on the position and I'm going to tell it to take the anchor point location. So it will jump to the same location. And now I'm going to move the anchor point the layer doesn't seem to move that much or at all. So now I'm going to center it looks pretty good. And when I'm going to rotate it, yeah, it's rotating exactly as I want it. Okay, so now I want to press Alt click 
and I'm gonna write, I'm not gonna write, but I'm gonna create an expression that will derive the angle of the camera to the layer. This expression is inside vector math and it's called look at. So we have two points and we need to fill them up with the points that we need. So first of all, I'm gonna select the ring layer and the camera layer and I'm gonna press P to reveal the position property and shift double E to reveal the uh, expression. And so it's gonna be a little bit more easy. I'm gonna press tilde, so I'm gonna see it all over the screen. Um, I'm gonna take the front point and I'm gonna tell it to be the position of the ring layer. And I'm gonna go to the at point and I'm gonna tell it that it's gonna be at the position of the camera. And now I can see that I have an error. Okay, don't worry, it's gonna be okay. This error happened because this expression gives us three-dimensional rotation and not one, because it's a 3D rotation value. So everything's gonna be okay. First of all, let's press okay and turn it into one value. First of all, I want to put it inside a variant. I'm gonna call it x equals. So everything here is gonna enter this thing. And I'm gonna make a comma and a dot. I don't know how to call this thing on the keyboard. And I'm gonna press enter. This will say to After Effects, this line of code is over. And now I'm gonna type x brackets zero plus x brackets one plus x brackets two, which means take the x rotation, add it to the y rotation and add the z rotation. So all of this is gonna give us one rotation. I'm gonna press enter and tilde again so I can see everything. And now I can see that it changes while I turn the camera, but it's too slow. So maybe I want to mu multiply it by five. First of all, a little bit more brackets before and after. The second line, and I'm gonna multiply it by five. And now it's gonna rotate a bit better. And I can unsolo this layer and I'm gonna put it above the adjustment layer. Above the adjustment layer. And I think it's okay. Maybe I'm gonna lower the opacity. Yeah, that looks just nice. Okay, so we have this part. Now I want to make the background. So I'm gonna center the camera. And I'm gonna go to layer, new, solid. And this one's gonna be white. And I'm gonna create a new solid. And this one's gonna be black. On this solid, I'm gonna create an oval mask with double click. I'm gonna reverse it with subtract. And I'm gonna press F, feather it up, double M. And I'm gonna expand it and maybe lower the opacity. Now I'm gonna take this both and I'm gonna put them on the back so it will not conceal the phone. And let's see what we have, looks pretty nice. And now I want to make a reflection of the phone on the floor, imaginary floor. So I'm gonna duplicate one of the phone layers and I'm gonna rotate it so it's gonna be flipped and I'm gonna take it down on the Y axis and a little bit more so they touch each other. Okay, perfect. And I'm gonna lower the opacity of this layer so it's gonna be a little bit more opaque. And now we have this nice reflection. Okay, now what? Now I can make another solid so we can create a shadow. So we're gonna turn it 3D. It's gonna be the sun of this layer and I'm gonna rotate it, maybe expand it a bit, take it down, more and more, perfect. And now I'm gonna create a rectangular mask. I'm gonna adjust it a little bit 
and after I'm gonna adjust it I think I'm gonna feather it up and yeah that looks pretty nice and let's see what we have here perfect and so now I want to create a little bit bloom or gloom oh I, I don't think I know this word in English but it's like a glow so I'm gonna open a new adjustment layer and I'm gonna put it above everything and I'm gonna call the levels effect and I'm gonna clip everything I'm gonna clip the blacks and now I want to fast blur it and I'm gonna put on the repeat edge pixels and I'm gonna take this layer and I'm gonna put it on screen and this is a little bit too much but I can lower the opacity of this layer so it's gonna look like this that's nice that's really really nice and I think we're done with this one but I want to show you something else go to the text logo and now we have uh, let's open a new camera and what's so special about this comp at it looks approximately the same but now the alpha and everything is connected to the 3d layers so when it moves without the camera the reflection moves accordingly so how did this happen let's create a new solid and we're gonna make it white and I'm gonna take the rectangle mass tool and I'm gonna take the pen tool pressing control and click to remove one of the points and I'm gonna go to the ramp effect put it right over here and now I'm gonna take the white point over here and the black point here and I'm gonna put it on screen and now I will turn this to 3d layer I'm gonna put it the Sun of the text layer and I'm gonna call this reflection and I'm gonna take it backwards again and I'm gonna scale it up okay and now we don't need to put any adjustment layers because we have a layer effect uh, layer style which makes the same thing um, so this is nice to know and I'm gonna duplicate this layer put it above the reflection and I'm gonna tell it to take the alpha but the fun thing is that I can take the source text of this layer and the source text of the original layer and I'm gonna connect them so every time I'm gonna type something different on the original layer let's say I potato we're gonna get the same text in the copied layer well that's nice and I think that's all for now so as usual for one week uh, you can download the materials of this project for free they are here uh, below and you can also check the rest of the site so you can go to tutorials and watch the latest tutorials you can go to the blog and see crazy techniques and you can go to the products and if uh, it takes time to load up don't worry give it a little bit more because the gifts uh, behind the scenes are a little bit heavy oh, just got up and you can check out the arrow preset and first of all you can be updated by considering liking us on Facebook, following us on Instagram or subscri subscribe to us on YouTube because now it's really sad. Do something about it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you will use it and it will save you tons of time. I'm Miran Tabib for Video DNA where the English is bad and the tutorials are good. I'll see you next time.